Welcome to the first day of partnering with the Holy Spirit. We are here as men and women of God to lift up the name of Jesus on this, what the world calls a Black Friday, but we call it a Friday of light. We are here to shine the light of Jesus that is in us, to shine the light of Jesus that is moving through us. The theme for this night is kingdom principles and integrity in business. I'm so happy that you are here today, whether you are here live or you are looking on at another day. I pray that this day really accomplishes all the purpose that it was set out to be. And we pray as we go into today that you will receive all that God has for you today. As we move forward in prayer, I just want to invite Pastor Lord to lead us at this time. Pastor Lord. Amen. Good night to all the participants tonight. As we partner with the Holy Spirit in this conference, I just want you to agree with me in prayer this evening that the Spirit of the living God would move among us, would move upon us and move through us. Father, in the name that is above every name, we thank you for what you're going to do this afternoon. We thank you for what you have already done. We thank you in anticipation for a move of the Spirit over these three days. We pray, Father and God, you're going to cause us to be affected. You cause us to be influential, even, Father and God, as we tarry through this season of this conference. And I thank you, Lord, for each participant. I pray, Father and God, that your hands will be heavily upon us, that we will be that which you have caused us to be in this season, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father and God, for the blood of Jesus that has cleansed us, that has prepared us, that has brought us to this point. We thank you, O oh God, as your Holy Spirit move in this place, that you will have your way, Father, on each person and everything that we have been assigned to do in the name of let there be clarity, let there be purpose, let there be execution, let there be understanding. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, that you will receive the honor, the glory, and the praise. We lift you up to Today, Father and God, we lift up your holy name. We thank you for what, Father and God, you will achieve in this meeting through your people. In the name of Jesus, I declare, Father, as this goes to the airway, it will affect those who hear. Father, I thank you right now for that which you have already done in the heavens and you are declaring it in the earth be blessed be glorified in the matchless name of jesus we thank you lord we honor you we give you the glory we give you the praise and we worship your holy name so tonight father as we begin this series father and god of integrity in business may the integrity father be seen in and through our lives in the matchless name of jesus we give you thanks we give you praise we give you honor Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We exalt you this evening, Father. We lift you up tonight, your oh God. We know that there is no other God like you. We direct worship and praise and adoration to the foremost high God. May your God exalt you. Father God, we bless you tonight. Thank you for your precious blood. Hallelujah. I bring an offering of worship to my King. No one on earth deserves the praises that I sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Oh Lord, I bring an offering. 
Hallelujah. I bring an offering of worship, my King. No one on earth deserves the praise that I sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Oh Lord, I bring an offering to you. The sun cannot compare to the glory of your love. There is no shadow in your presence. Hallelujah. No mortal man would bear. To stand before your throne, before the Holy One of heaven. It's only by your blood, and it's only through your grace, Lord, I come. And I bring an offering of worship. My King, no one on earth deserves the praise that I sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Oh Lord, I bring an offering to you. Oh Lord, I bring and to you, oh Lord, I bring an offering to you. How great is our God? Sing with me, how great. Is our God, Lord, we see how great, how great is our God. You're the name of our own name, and worthy of all praise. My heart will sing, how oh, great is our God, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Great are you, great are you, Lord. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, we see how great. How great is our God. You're the name above all names, Lord. You're worthy, you're worthy of all praise. As far my heart will sing, how great. Is our God your name? Your the name above all names, Lord, you're worthy, you're worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing how great. God, for your 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Truly, God is good. Truly, we are happy to be here today. Men of Copas, this team have gone before the throne of God, and God has downloaded into their spirit a great word that will change your life. Today is kingdom principles and integrity in business. We are bringing in together on this panel that is about to speak to you, business owners, ministry leaders, and we are coming together with a divine connection to impart your life. You know, we inspire and we are going to equip the body of Christ with a vision to co-labor with the Holy Spirit. I just want you to imagine this one thing. Imagine the impact of Christian businesses and Christian business leaders. What they would gain from this day, from this time of connection, this, this time of word that is about to be delivered by this very distinguished panel, coupled with good stewards and resources in enabling the kingdom of God to flourish and to prosper. Today, as we said, the world is calling it a Black Friday, but we call it a Friday of light, a Friday of hope, a Friday of redemption. The key speakers for today Pastor Richard Lord, Reverend Dale Francis, Reverend David Tam, Brother Dave White, Brother David Hernandez, and also Evangelist Miller. And they have come together to motivate you, to inspire you for God's purpose for your business. And today, without any further ado, I just want to welcome the first speaker for today. Today, we are about to build a business. We are about to build a vision. And when we come to the end of this program, you will understand what we mean by building. So starting off the proceedings today is not another person than this senior pastor of Jehovah House of Praise in Tobago. He's also the Men of Purpose president in Tobago. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you who's going to speak on the foundation of the business, Pastor Richard Lord. Welcome, Pastor Lord. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. It's all over to you. Thank you again, Pastor Paddy, and to all my colleagues and friends on the panel this evening. We just want to engage this subject. The theme of our conference is partnering with the Holy Spirit. And in particular, 
integrity in business. I want to lay a foundation, however, to build the platform on which I would say that businesses and indeed our lives should be built upon. And I want to bring to the table four areas that I think are key as foundation stones that we can set in place that establishes that type of foundation to give us the platform in which we could uh, move forward. I want us to talk first about uh, covenant. And we understand what a covenant is. In the book of Deuteronomy, God declared that Deuteronomy chapter uh, 7 and verse 9, he declared that he keeps covenant and mercy up to a thousand generations. And we understand that when he talks about a thousand generations, that he's really showing us the, 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 the everlasting covenant. He's showing that he's in with it forever. And in Deuteronomy 27, he is, he's establishing a covenant with his people, Israel. And the very interesting thing of, of this uh, covenant that he's setting is that he's including everybody. He's including the men, the women, the wives, the children, the hewers of stone, the, 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 the drawers of water, the officers, the captains. He's including everyone. So it gives us an idea that it's all inclusive. And when we say all inclusive here, we're not talking about the type of doctrine that is being preached somewhere, you know, these days. But it all inclusive meaning that uh, God is allowing the born again, those who have uh, chosen to carry his name, to be part of this covenant. And the thing about the covenant is that He's established a covenant which is an agreement with us. What is interesting is that we understand the faithfulness of God. We don't question that, but still God, as if he didn't trust himself, wanted to give us the confidence of the agreement and the partnership that he's entering into, that he was established a covenant just to give us the confidence in what parties he's playing and so whatever we are engaging god is declaring up front that i'm with you we have to understand that if you really understand covenant it would change the way we pray it would change our faith dynamics our paradigm it would shift us out of life we would begin to understand that god is in it with us forever he won't allow us to fail not to fall through. And that is where the guarantee is. We want to look also as God, as our father, which really establishes relationship and love. We know, understand, we have this image of fatherhood in the earth. We know our fathers uh, with us, teach us, uh, with us all the time. Uh, and, and we depend on our earthly fathers to provide for us. You know, David made this statement in one of the Psalms. He said, when my mother and my father forsake me, God himself will lift me up. And that established the fatherhood of God. And that relationship that, we know what kind of relationship that David had with, with God. And it, 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 the fatherhood in that relationship was born out of that kind of relationship that David had with, 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 with God. God himself uh, has declared in, 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 in Matthew chapter 6, he said, when you pray, pray this way, our father. He said, I want you to decree it. I want you to agree it. I want you to say it, although I know what you want, but speak it in the heavens. Let the heavens know that I, you are my son, you are my daughter. Speak it that the angels will hear. Speak it that there will be no... There will be no disconnect between the relationship that we have. God wants to establish that he's our father. He will give us what we ask. And 
that dynamics gives us the understanding of love, the relationship that we share with the father. And, uh, you know, he guards that jealousy. Hear his statement. Call, let no man in the earth. Call no man in the earth father. He, he said, you have one father. And so he's jealously guarding that love relationship. And that is what we, that is what we buy into. As a matter of fact, he went on to say that, listen, I know the birds of the air. I, I know everything about all my creation. He said, how much more will I take care of you? And this is the, we can build up on this. We, we want to step on and we want to talk about one very key and important thing in, and as we talk about integrity and we talk about relationship. The first two areas of, that we talk about, covenant and fatherhood, really is God's part with us. But what about our part in the relationship in the kingdom? And this is where our stewardship of whatever we have in our hand becomes important. God said, or Jesus said, when he was going to Jerusalem, he sent his, his disciples before him and he said, go into the village and you will see uh, us and it's cold. Loose it and bring it to me. And if any man says aught, says the master has need of it. Uh, there was another example when there was to be the Passover. And he said, Get, make, it, make ready for the Passover. He said, where shall we have the Passover? He said, go into the city. You will see a man with a pitcher follow him into the house where he goes. And say unto the good man of the house, show us the, the chamber where we shall have the Passover. And he shall make it ready. What is important here to note is that in every case, Jesus didn't own any of these things. But he laid claim to these things. I want to submit to us that everything that we have, Jesus lays claim to these things. Hear what he says in the book of Psalms. Uh, he said, the beasts of the forest are mine. The fowls of the mountains are mine. The cattle on a thousand hills are mine. The beasts of the fields are mine. Indeed, he said, the world is mine. And therefore, we begin to understand that what we have in our hands, money, possession, whatever we have, once the master makes a call upon it, we release it into the kingdom. You know, it's very interesting that um, we, we understand this principle. We must understand this principle that when God makes a claim upon something, we release it into the kingdom. And as we build our lives, it's a question of choice. Uh, in the book of Timothy, uh, Paul clarified a statement when he said, those who are rich, set not your heart upon that, nor the deceitfulness of riches. He went on to say that God has given us richly everything to enjoy. So it's not a matter that he doesn't want us to enjoy. But when he calls upon it, you release it into his hands. Therefore, we, we understand what that means. There is one other area I want to bring to us as a platform and a foundation. We're talking foundation now, where you build upon. And it is the administrative structure of your business. There's a scripture that says, no man built a tower unless he comes to course. Least, after you've laid the foundation and you couldn't finish, they mock you. Now, that means that the foundation in which you build it's not complete until you have put everything into, the, into that foundation. So the administrative structure of your business, your plans, 
your short-term goals, your medium-term goals, your, 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 your long-term goals. And I know the other uh, panelists will take it from here and, and expand on this subject. But however, I'm saying we have to have an administrative structure that undergirds the foundation that is, is the cement, is, is, is that which holds the whole structure together. And as we consider the subject of foundation, we have to understand that everything projects off a foundation, regardless of whether it is moving or if it is, if a rocket is launched, it has to launch off a, a foundation. If a building has to settle, we have to settle. Everything originates from a foundation. And it's a question of choice. When we talk about integrity, one of the things we also understand in, in, in the scripture, he talks about master. We must understand this one. There are two masters. There's, the Bible talks about two masters. The master, which is a mammon, or the master, which is Jesus Christ. And if you make Jesus your master, then you build the integrity of your business is built upon that. If you make mammon, which is, you know, there are people who have not yet come to the place where money is uh, understood. And we understand in the kingdom of heaven, the, the currency is not money. And if you understand, if, if you, you hold to the money, what we do here is that we use the money here to build another foundation to another establishment in the heavens. The money is just used here it does, as a currency, but it is used actually to build an everlasting foundation somewhere else. And therefore, I want to submit to us today that is our choice to build upon the integrity of the word, covenant, the integrity in fatherhood, the integrity in our stewardship, the integrity in our plans being properly laid down and articulated so that when we launch from that pad, we know that it is established, it is stable, it can carry the load, and it can go for, for all seasons. I, I want to thank you this evening for listening. I want to I wanna encourage all of us as we build the other blocks of integrity in business as we go forward in this conference. We continue to partner with the Holy Spirit as we build the blocks in business. Thank you, Pastor Paddy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor Lord. Excellent delivery. Amen, amen. And Pastor Lord, uh, what Pastor Lord did tonight was lay down the foundation. This is, the, this is what is needed for the foundation of your business. And what he has given to us today is definitely great ground for us to build a business for to build a life, for to build a ministry on the whole. And thank you so much, Pastor Lord, for that excellent delivery. Yeah. Great job. Excellent job. Well appreciated. As we continue in the building process, we want to go further. As we have laid the foundation of the business, we want to start to put up the pillars. And coming to put up the pillars of the business is not another person than um, a very joyful, and you would hear him in a while, a jolly character, somebody that we, we love uh, or when we pray every Sunday and every Tuesday to hear him pray. He's a men leader of San Fernando Open Bible Church. He's a men's prayer group leader. He's in the usher ministry. He's a leader of men of vision. He's also a member of the Region 2 Council. Uh, he's a regional director, men's leader. So he has men at heart. He's married a father of two, a grandfather of three. He is a business owner, Christian Electrical Services, an electrician by trade. But more so, he's a humble, great man of God. And he is coming to show us how to now put up the pillars of this foundation that Pastor Lord would have presented to us today. 
So it is my honor and my privilege to welcome at this time Dr. Dave White. God bless you, my friend. Amen. Pleasant good evening to both listening and viewing audience. As our, as our doctor has already introduced me, I'm Brother Dave White, the owner of an electrical company for the past 21 years. During this period, I was able to provide electrical services to the domestic, commercial, and industrial field. Within the last 12 years, I, div I diversified into the opening of an electrical store, which allowed me to supply material to the general public. I wish to thank my brother, but the Lord for that foundation that he has laid, I believe that is a universal um, description in terms of any type of business that we would choose even in our marriage and in, you know, in our family's life, if we were to adopt those principles recognizing our authority in Christ Jesus, it means that we will be on solid foundation, the rock that Christ speak about. Amen? My topic this evening is the pillars of the business. I would like to remind us that every phase in developing a business should be deemed critical and acknowledged as equally important and valuable for the continual success of the business. Whereas the foundation also required a team to build it, it does not necessarily mean this team will actively be involved in the daily running of the business. For example, in the foundational stage, someone may invest financially into that aspect of the business. And that might be a, an arrangement where he will be repaid at a lower, lower stage in the business. My foundational scripture this evening is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Paul wrote to the Corinthians after hearing of diverse of division in the church. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no division among you but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. I found this scripture very critical for the forming of a, of a business. Why? It's critically important that, you know, we choose specifically that we will choose men who will be like-minded. That's the only guarantee way we will succeed. Not that we may not have some misunderstanding or different of opinion, but it is critical to maintain unity in any business or establishment for its furtherance. And, amen? So that is why very early, in a business, we ought to be mindful of the importance of being like-minded. Amen? My topic this evening is the pillars of the business. The pillars represent the selection of personnel coming together with different skills and gifting to establish structure in the company. It can be done in a phase basis. In other words, you may decide to choose a minimum amount of personnel to begin with and gradually, gradually you can increase as the business develops. Based upon the law, however, in establishing a business after registering the company name and approval given, you now have to legally form this company 
which required a secretary and a minimum of two directors. The pillars is the deciding factor as how high the business can go and how much it can grow. It means the team you select to go forward must have the same vision and mission. God's word reminds us to count the costs. That was mentioned in the foundational stage by Pastor Lord. For which of you intended to build a tower does not sit down first and count the costs? Amen? Guidelines in selecting this team. I believe this is one of the most important aspects of the business. Many businesses have failed or underperformed because of poor choices in selecting persons in this stage of the business. We are reminded to count the cost. Therefore, it says to me how critical it is for us to take our time and carefully consider personnel you select to function in this area. In the pillar stage, it deals with two main groups of persons. The formation of the company, where you will decide who you're going to choose to be your secretary, who you're going to choose to be your directors. And then we have the second phase that we will now use the members of the first phase to decide the team who will manage the actual business as the business go forward. I, give, I wish to give some advice of what not to do. And I'm giving this advice based upon personal experiences I would have had when I would have opened my business years ago. You know, sometimes you do things and you did not fully do your necessary checks and balance. And you will learn it the hard way and eventually it will come to your understanding the why things may not have worked out as well as you would have hoped, even though you know you would have had the skills to accomplish the task. Amen? As I already mentioned earlier, pertaining to the law in the formation of the company, one of the common practice we do in this process and this process I'm talking about is choosing the directors and choosing the secretary that we will now use to legally form the company, which you will have already established a name. Amen. This practice has shown. Okay, sometimes what I have uh, what we what I have observed over the years is that. We will choose someone who might be a member of our family, close friend, close relative. We might choose someone who might be a member of the church. Many times we choose these people in an effort to expedite the starting process for the actual registration, legal registration of your company. This has proven over time to create great damage towards your organization. Well, how? Many of the time we choose people who may not have the passion, people, family member, who may not have the desire. And yes, they may agree at the beginning, but when the business actually start to function, due to the fact that it's not an area that they might be versing, an area that might, they might be experiencing, you soon find yourself having to pick up the slack where they are now 
as we would say, underperforming because it really was never in, in their desire to be directly involved. But, you know, sometimes you ask someone you, that you consider and they consider you and they would agree, again, not knowing exactly what the task would be about. Amen? And this practice has shown over time that many times you are left being the lone driver, which results in low productivity and growth of the business. I use myself as an example, whereby I have, when I formed my business 30 something years ago, I used family member to be the secretary and also to be directors of the company. In doing that, I recognize that the interest shown and the performance was really bringing a strain upon me, a strain that eventually I began to see the business suffering at some point and stage. It was becoming literally impossible to effectively manage the business because it's like I having to do the actual work and yet manage from the office point of view. It was like I'm serving two masters at the same time, which is literally very challenging and difficult to, to, to accomplish. Amen? Therefore, even though these chosen members were not directly the pillars, they are expected. So even though we may find the directors and the secretary, even though they may not manage the actual business, they have to still be willing to assist you in the in the overviewing of the business itself. They are the ones who will work together with you as you, as you now select the other phase or the other groups who will now be the ones to set, to lay the foundation, sorry, but to, to actually put the, the strategy, strategize how do you go forward as an establishment, you know? And it's something that we have to look at. It's something that we, may, we, we will never be able to accomplish on our own. I wish to also remind us that in choosing is not something that we ought to, to be hurry. You know, sometimes we, we want to get something done and we want to get it done now. I wish to really encourage us to take our time, carefully consider, carefully consider, carefully consider the, the people in whom you will choose. Sometimes it would be wise for us to tap into the resources we may have in church. We may have a brother, we may have a sister who may have already have an established business. And I would recommend that, you know, we sit with them and we bounce off ideas, you know, so that they could give us some level of guidance. They would be able, they would be able to, to, to show us, you know, how, how some of the ways, what are some of the things we can do? Amen? As a believer, spend time in the presence of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to, to be our guide, to help us to make the right decision. I believe in God's kingdom, we have the resources among ourselves. We have the resources. One of the things I would advise us to do 
or not to do is to do not say or assume I am doing anything in faith. Because even though you may decide to do it in faith, unless God directly speaks to you, you still need a level of wisdom. And that is what many times we, we find ourselves, you know, falling short by not applying the wisdom to the word of God. We try, we do part, and we did not focus on the other part, which will complement the faith that you would want to exercise. Amen? And so as I conclude this evening, I wish to, as I hand over to my brother, who is going to be dealing with the formula, forming of the, the walls and the structure, yeah? This part of it is going to be heavily dependent upon the people who are now being chosen to manage that aspect of it. Amen? So, I thank God for the opportunity to share with you all, and I hand over to our next presenter. Pastor? Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Dave. Excellent presentation. Excellent presentation. And Brother Dave would have put down, as we would say, the pillars, the pillars on the foundation. So we are building. For those of you who may have come in late, we are right now, we are building the kingdom principles and integrity in business. As the Lord would have laid a foundation, Dr. White would have started putting up the pillars, and our next presenter, as Brother White would have said, is going to put up the walls, the walls and the structure of the business. He has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in 2003 and has been a faithful servant of God since then. He's a member of the Superior Open Bible Church where he serves on the local church board under Pastor Mark David. He is a youth leader, he's a prayer warrior, and has a passion for the things of the Lord. He has also been heavily involved in Christian solidarity movement. He is married, is a father of three young men. He's a business owner of DBA Condition and Refrigeration services. It is my pleasure to introduce my friend from a long time, Brother David Hernandez, who is about to speak about the walls and structure of the business. Welcome, Brother David. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Irvin, Pastor Irvin, and the team of distinguished gentlemen who would have gone before me. Good afternoon, everyone. I am simply in awe as to uh, what God is doing in terms of the foundation and the pillars that we would have heard about. And my job this afternoon is to capture the concept of putting down the walls, you know, walls that would continue to formulate the borders of our building, our business, and our life, our spirituality, our walking with God. And so the, the concept of partnering with the Holy Spirit has been, you know, alluded to. The concept of allowing ourselves to function with integrity in business has been alluded to. And we've seen both the importance of the foundation and the pillars. And when I think about the concept of the wall, what immediately comes to mind is the type of emphasis that should be placed on a wall. You know, if, if we look at the scripture in Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 4, it basically says that, you know, when Nehemiah heard that the walls were broken down and the gates were burnt down, Nehemiah said, my heart broke and I wept 
And so that's the importance of getting that type of news, even holding a very distinguished position at the time, working, serving the king. Nehemiah's heart was really looking after the business of God and wondering what's happening with Jerusalem, what's happening in his homeland. And sometimes we tend to forget the importance of building up good, strong walls. The walls, however, are laid at the top of the foundation, at the sides of the pillars, and it facilitates not only the areas that you can put your windows and very beautiful pitiers and stuff like that where you can decorate this wall and have a sense of beauty coming off of your building or your business or your spiritual life. It also facilitates the roof, the covering. So the wall is such an important place or such an important role is being played by the wall. That God himself pays a lot of emphasis on the wall. And we see it with Nehemiah's heart. He broke. He began to weep. He noticed that there was no sense of defense for, his, for God's people. There was no sense of, you know, protection and security. Because the wall would represent security, protection, and that sense of, I'm not going to be just easily invaded. Even the scripture says that our wall shall be called salvation and our gates shall be called praise. And so when we think about the walls and we compare it to the concept of salvation, our salvation is like a well and we can pull almost every and anything out of our salvation. The more you pull, the more you can get because the salvation that God gives to us is holistic. And the wall is something like that. The wall literally provides for you an opportunity to really just build into your life walls of integrity, which is now a representation of God in your life. And so when you think about the word integrity, you'll notice that God himself kind of marries himself to integrity. He says, I, the Lord thy God, I am one God. And when we look at the meaning of the word integrity, you'll notice that the word integrity means to be one, to be single, to be whole, undivided, and specific, constant in all the characteristics of God continuously taking place in your life and that's the type of walls that you want to build in your business walls of integrity that is actually inviting god's presence and his power his provision to be there another side that we see the importance of the walls is that god in isaiah says i have placed watchmen on the walls if you look throughout scriptures there is a lot of emphasis being paid on walls. He says, hear what? I, I will allow these watchmen to stay there and they will cry day and night and they will not give them their eyes rest. And so sometimes the type of walls that we want to build in our business is one that is going to invite the integrity of God all the time. One that is going to encourage us to stand in prayer all the time. You know, we are saying today that we want integrity, so then we are saying literally we want God and his characteristics in our business, in other words. We want all of him all the time in our business. So when that is established, we can safely say, my walls have been set on the sure foundation. My pillars are interlocked to the God of all creation, the omniscient one who knows, sees, understands who was, is, and is to come. And he's there with you because you are deliberately 
putting him up as a wall in every area. And the wall of integrity provides for you a generational blessing. When a man walks in, in, in his integrity, his children are blessed after him. And so we see as the walls are strategically built, Nehemiah building the wall, he was opposed, Sambias and Tobias. They came and he had to do two things, build the wall and defend the wall at the same time. So there was a tool in one hand and a very important weapon in the other hand. And so when we build walls of integrity, we are literally coming against the enemies of the concept and ideology of the kingdom of heaven, which we are supposed to represent in our business as we invite God to come. As we continue to move in those directions and persons come close enough to us, they'll notice that there is something so unique about the business, not necessarily the excellence in service, not necessarily the punctuality and the type of structure that is there. But what they will notice that, you know, I can't really preach this person. I can't put a price to this person. I can't bribe this person. But they wouldn't understand why. Because your walls of integrity is so high that it cannot be breached by a bribe. Because you have invited God to become that wall, that defense, that protection, that provision. And that thing that will cause you to seek him first. And then everything else will be added. Seek first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33. And all is righteousness. And then everything else shall be added. So as we continue to flow in business, we'll notice that these walls that are up there, not only combats, bribe, and stuff like that, but it puts us in a position to command stuff. Because we are now having God in the business, running the business as the CEO. We're now dealing with the office of Christ because we are saying that we are Christian businessmen. We're not functioning just in the authority of the name Jesus, but we're functioning in the authority and the office of the Christ, the Messiah. And we're standing on that wall, the office of the Messiah that carries with it the anointing to destroy the yokes of corruption and bribery and lies and all sorts of things that will seek to break down integrity in Christian business. So we see how much is important to identify with integrity in Christian business because it is God operating in the office of his son, the Christ, the anointed one, and then he brings us to the place where we are in the marketplace. Business is our marketplace. That's where we know as Christian businessmen, can influence the status quo. On the mountain of business, we can influence the earth. That's where the money moves. And people believe that, you know, with money, you can do as you please. But yes, money answers all things. But God has said, and someone else said it, whom will you serve? Mammon or God? So immediately, you have the opportunity not only to function in the integrity and office of our God, but also to influence the earth with his kingdom culture, with the walls that we will build up, with the type of walls that will constitute within our business an opportunity not only for persons to encounter God, but for persons to actually be freed and feel a sense of defense by the wall of their salvation. And also coming to a point where they know that they are functioning with one of the greatest entity that ever was, is, and will be, which is the kingdom of God in the earth. And so as Christian businessmen, when we get that particular thing clear, we will note that God is not playing with us. He's not going to ease off and allow us to do as we want. One last thing before I go. Joshua had a task to go against the city of Jericho. And the thing about walls, you must really be 
steadily planted on your foundation, connected to your pillars, and functioning with the instructions of your covering, which is the other speaker will deal with the roof. So you have to take the orders from heaven. They didn't just march around six times, but they knew what was happening. On the seventh day, they made a shout because they understood that there is anointing that backs up what God tells them to do. And there is an authority that comes with the office of the Christ and the integrity that they do it on is a sure foundation of God showing up. And the walls fell flat and they were able to take the city. And God is saying to us today, as we continue to pursue business, build up strong walls, prayerfulness, spiritual discipline, simple humility, bridle your tongue, rule your spirit, do the things that are necessary that will continue to emulate strong walls, strong walls that are full of integrity. Sometimes you can look at, at a cupboard door and it looks very beautiful on the outside. If you go close to it and you knock it, the wood lice would have eaten out the entire inside of it, but the frame outside looks good and perfect. But the inside has been eroded. So walls that are built on integrity and truth and the principles of the kingdom are true integrity walls. It, it can't fall under pressure. And that's what we need to do when we build walls. So I thank you very much for the opportunity to share Pastor Irvin and the team. And I give God all the praise, honor, and glory. Thank you so much, Brother David. Very well put together. Excellent delivery. Brother David just gave us, I would say, a synopsis on the walls and the structure of the business. And he indicated very well, as we all know, having strong walls, they are very, very important. And I love the illustration of Nehemiah building the wall and the heart that Nehemiah had and God saw that heart and God assisted him. As we continue to build this business from foundation to extension and this wall is so very important, one of the most important parts of the, of the instructor itself. Moving forward to our next presenter, we are going to start covering this structure. The topic is the roof and the covering of the business. He is a pastor of Divine Breakthrough Empowerment Ministries located in beautiful Black Rock <laughs> and the scenic island of Tobago. Mm. He is a member, the church is a member of the Pentecostal Assembly of the West Indies. He is married for 24 years and has three children. He's been in ministry for over 22 years. He is an ordained pastor, along with his wife. They have a passion for developing relationships and seeing Christian marriages strive. He holds a diploma in interdisciplinary studies, the major in pastoral studies from the West Indies School of Theology. He is also a certified pre- and post-marital counselor, along with his wife. They are the producers and hosts of Intimate Moments, which started in 2020, with a goal to encourage Christians, married and single, of the intimacy with God and how they can attain this objective. He is also the host of a radio program in Grenada, Hope 103 FM, and he has traveled extensively from Argentina to the United States and preaches on various platforms all over. Also, he is a producer of Tobago 5 channel and is very busy at this time. <laughs> Seeing that Tobago is in a hot election time. <laughs> we thank you for taking the time out to be with us and to speak with us today. I want to introduce to you Reverend Dale Francis coming to speak about the roof and covering of the business. God bless you, Reverend Dale. 
Amen. Praise God. Everybody heard me. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Thank you, um, Reverend Paddy. It's such a joy and privilege to be here. I tell you, I could just sit back and enjoy these men that went before me. Such powerful presentation. Amen. I, I, I always think it a, a privilege when I stand before God's people. Um, and this time, as you know, we are in election, so it's pretty busy in Tobago as the production manager of the TV station. Nevertheless, I, I was given the task to, to speak on the roof of the building. Amen. And kingdom principles and integrity in business. As you, you know, when we start, we start a foundation there's, as pastor, Lord, the, the foundation a while ago, and then the walls and the pillars that was placed. One of the most important thing, apart from all that was said before, it's the roof of the business or the roof of any structure. And the roof simply is what you call the final stage of the building, a, the, the final stage of the building. And when you think about the roof, the roof simply does several things because they are all interconnected. The roof is interconnected from the foundation to the walls, to the pillars. But the roof really provides what we call protection and covering. Protection and covering. One of my scriptures I want to use to, to, to talk about the roof is in Psalms 91. Psalms 91. We're going to use two scriptures. And with the short time, I have Psalms 91. The Bible talks about in Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress in him will I trust. One of the, the, the things that we talk about, the roof that brings protection as you grow your business, as you as your business develops, one of the things that is so important, you want to protect the pillars, you want to protect the windows, you want to protect the walls. The roof is an important part in that construct of the building. And so it's important that when you think about the roof, what type of roof you want to have over your building. You want to think about what type of material you want to use over your building. You also want to think about how you're going to maintain the roof because if there's a poor maintenance of the roof, it also speaks how the walls will come, fall down and how the windows will get damaged. So you want to ensure that the roof is secured. And as we develop ourselves as business, as Christians, we, we, we want to look at that second verse that i just mentioned in psalms 91 and we'll see a truth comes out of that verse that said i will say of the lord psalmist david said that he is my refuge mean that he's my protector he's my hiding place he's my hiding place and he said something at the latter and he said in him will i trust one of the things as businessmen and business and those who are owning business and children of god we must put our trust in god if our business will fly and excel, and excel and all that we want to do, our confidence and our trust must be in God. If we don't trust God, therefore, we are putting our confidence in other things. And as you know, I know we are Christian businessmen. I don't take it like I don't even take it for granted. Some people are in church for a long while, but I don't know how well delivered they are. I don't know because some people, they open the Bible in their business and they put a, a what do you call, a, 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 a what do you call, a, a, a scissors inside a business because they believe that these, these things will encourage people to come into their business. So I'm not taking it for granted. No, and am I saying that build, build Christian people are doing that? However, I am mindful that we should put our trust in him because if we put our trust in anything else, I guarantee you the protection that we are looking for, it may never come because we are putting our trust and our confidence in something else. So that is why the Psalmist David said what he said, the Lord is my refuge. Yes, and, and in him will I trust. Now, the roof, the roof provide that covering. And I think it's one of the speakers said a while ago about, he, let me see, about the walls and how Nehemiah, he used Nehemiah as a perfect example about he having what, I don't know how he described it. He having one to fight and one to build. I can't remember the exact word that he used, but what a powerful illustration. What he was simply saying, when you put your trust in God, what you are saying, you are putting your trust in the integrity of God. And we are talking about, we are talking about business now. And we're talking about integrity. 
when we put our trust in God, we are putting, we are saying that the, we put our integrity in a God that functions with integrity because God is a God of integrity. And we know in this season where COVID-19 seems to, to be ravaging businesses and many people might be looking to go around corners, I want to encourage us, put your trust in God. Put it, put your trust in God. Don't make any shortcuts. Listen to me. Put your trust in God. When businesses are failing, you need to still put your what? Trust in God because he is your covering. He will bring protection over your business. When every business might fall down, God is going to supernaturally send men and women from all over to invest in your business. People will call you from the East and the West and you will just say, what is happening? You will start receiving business after business because you put your what? Trust in God. My God in him will I trust. Listen, this Psalm is such a powerful Psalm, and I want to read something else. Hallelujah. Praise God. When you put your trust in God, what will happen? You will receive peace hallelujah the bible said in isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3 he said thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because he was trusted in thee hallelujah because you trust in him what is happening i i know a lot of things are happening and people are swaying from left to right some people can't say pastor i want to give up the business it's too frustrating i know where i'm working i'm the production manager of tobago channel five and people are resigning and you see i have to take up this slack people are resigning people are giving up because of the frustration of covid19 i want to encourage us today Put your trust. Let God be your peace. That is the integrity of God. He is able to keep you because you're putting your trust in him. I want somebody to give me the time because I, I have somebody make sure and tell me, don't open your mic and tell me, Pastor Paddy, I'm get, just, just open your mic. I will not take any offense to that. Just open your mic and say, time up. You know what I mean? Listen to me. We got to put our trust in him. Why? Because he is well able to sustain our business. I'm telling you, you know, I was a believing God. He is well able to sustain your business. Don't be afraid because he will protect you. Listen to me. He said to the children of Israel, listen to me. When you go through the waters, I will be there. When you go through the flood, I will be there because I am your protector. I am the roof over over your head. I will protect you when the waters and the rain come in like a flood. I will protect you when your business seems that is having trouble. I will protect you when the enemy wants to destroy you because let me tell you, the reason why the enemy wants to destroy your business, he knows as kingdom people, we will use the blessing and the finances to push the agenda of the kingdom. So the Bible said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, I will raise a standard against him. So your roof or the protection of God is important. So how then will you maintain your protection as a business person? Number one, you must maintain a prayerful altar with God. Maintain a prayerful altar. Hallelujah. Sometimes we might be busy up and down in the business, but let me tell you, when you get into your business in the morning, make sure that you bless the business. Hallelujah. Bless and bless God. You maintain that. And God is going to bless you because he's the roof over your head. Tell somebody he's a roof over your head. He will protect you. He'll keep you. Hallelujah. He will protect you. The other thing I want to mention, we talk about integrity. We talk about integrity. We need to maintain our own integrity as believers as businessmen. We, need, we, we seriously need to maintain our own. Well, God is a God of integrity. We ourselves need to maintain our integrity. People will try to sell you and do you things and tell you, I want you to do this. You know what I mean? This is a price for it. You could pay this price for it. Let me tell you, maintain your own integrity. Don't bow to the details. Satan is a liar and he's looking for an opening because remember I said a while ago, one thing about the roof, the roof want maintenance and anytime we open doors open doors the little cracks in the roof what we are doing we are allowing the enemy and water will start to sleep into the roof and when the water starts to sweep into the roof it will go down to the wall it will go down to the wall it will go into the window it'll start to undermine the foundation so you got to maintain our integrity amen praise god father bless your people tonight in the name of jesus the roof god is your roof god is your protector in jesus name Amen. Amen. I hope I didn't go over time, but God bless you so much, Pastor Paddy, for this time. Amen. That I could minister to God's people. Bless Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah.
Reverend Dale, I could have just sit back and relax and just take in this message for the rest of the night. The roof is so important, so very important. And God really used you to give us a, a synopsis of this, this great, great, great message that you just gave us here tonight. You know, I just want to let everyone know that um, what you're hearing tonight is just uh, the building of a business from foundation to extension. Every one of these present presenters would have just give us a this short, brief synopsis of what they felt in their heart concerning the foundation as we relate to the business and as Reverend David have mentioned, speaking to the covering of the business or the roof of the business. Each one of these presenters would also um, have an opportunity in 2022 to dive deeper into this subject. So I want you to stay tuned. I want you to stay um, stay connected to what is happening. And I want you to also remember that more is to come. Greater is to come. Greater is to come. And speaking about greater, we have covered the business. So now we are going to establish the business. The next topic is the business standing on wealth and prosperity. We all go into business and we go into business for a profit. And we go into business to make money. And uh, how do we do that? Well, the next presenter, he is an ordained minister at Miracle Ministries International under the inspired and dynamic pastorate of Reverend Dr. Winston Coffey since 1997. He is a founder and president of Champion Consultancy Services Limited. He has spent more than 34 years as a mechanical engineer and project man manager involved in the development and operations of the oil and gas industry of Trinidad and Tobago, including exploration and production, operation and maintenance, and project management and construction. During the past 20 years, he has been the project manager and delivered some of the largest and most challenging projects that this country have undertook to the value of over US $2 billion. As he has went to the throne of God, he has brought forth a small package that would really inspire you to build your business standing on wealth and prosperity. It is my great pleasure and privilege to introduce to you Reverend David Tam. Welcome, my brother. Thank you, Pastor Paddy. And um, to, to all, to all the speakers that went before and to, to everyone that's in attendance today, um, God bless you richly and I thank you for the opportunity to share with you this, this um, short presentation. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Just tell me if you are seeing it. Yes. Okay, good. Good. And it's about um, you know, just before we started, we started. Just, just wanna uh, but Hernandez spoke about character, and all the speakers gone so far. Read. It's, it's making me feel to go and build something right now. To go and do con some construction, and um. Brother Hernandez spoke about the, the integrity and, and the character. And it's, um, a few, uh, so several years ago, I, I went to the uh, uh, bank to borrow some money, and my wife and I. And we, in terms of qualifying for, for the loan, we were, I didn't think we had qualified for the amount that we, we, we were asking for. And we did get the loan, you know. But, uh, and then I, I spoke with the manager and asked him how it was possible, how, what happened for us to get the loan. He said, banking agencies, lending agencies lend on three Cs. The first C is capital. The 
second C is capacity, and the third C is character. And a lot of people don't realize how important character is in terms of getting loans. And I noticed that it's not just in loans, but in every area of your life, character is so much more important than other things. I just wanted to share that. Um, it's really about uh, changing the paradigm and the power of how changing the paradigm affects everything in our business. I just want to start with my purpose statement, my personal purpose statement. And because we are men of purpose, I believe that every person should have a purpose statement. Every person in your organization should have a purpose statement for themselves. My purpose is simple. My purpose is to express my love for God, myself, and my fellow men. My willingness to learn and my passion to teach, train, inspire, motivate, and activate others to productive and outstanding achievement. By committing to continuous and lifelong personal development, spiritual, intellectual, emotional, and physical development, and being a mentor and a coach to others. I commit to substantially influence and impact the lives of others through champions at church, at home, at work, in my community, in my nation, and around the world, in Jesus' name. That's my purpose statement. And coming out of the purpose statement, I believe we should all have a mission statement. The mission statement of champions is, at champions, we challenge you to discover, develop, and monetize your God-given gifts, talents, and abilities for the advancement of his kingdom in the earth and to equip you to fulfill your life's purpose. That's why the purpose statement is so important. The gifts, the talents, the abilities, all that will, will help us in terms of our business, your, your career, whatever it is. They are really tools to help us fulfill our life's purpose. Two things a person must know to improve their performance. Two things. One is where they are. And two is where they want to go. Any business you have, you know where you are. And you know what, what goals, what dream, what, 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 what is the outcome of the business, where you want to go with the, with the business. It is so simple and so obvious. Yet why are so many people and so many businesses stuck? You see, where we are, where we are is controlled by paradigms. And in order to move from where we are to where we want to go, we have to know how to change the paradigms. Unless the paradigms are changed, we will always be stuck with where we are. We can have how much good, how good plans to go to where we want to go, but unless we change the paradigms, we will always be stuck with where we are. Now, I'm not going to explain what paradigms are here. What I'm going to show you is the effect of paradigms in our lives and in our businesses. Paradigms shape our logic. Paradigms shape our logic. What you thought was not logical years ago, you realize now it's logical. Plain, it was always possible since the beginning of man, since Adam, for planes to fly. However, it wasn't logical for planes to fly up until the beginning of the 20th, the 20th century. It wasn't logical. The internet was always possible. From the beginning of mankind, the internet was always possible. But it's only in the last 20, 30 years, the internet became logical. Why? Because our paradigms control what we thought was logical. Before Columbus came to the new world, 
everyone thought that the world was flat. That was the paradigm we lived in. He had to change his paradigm to think of the world as a sphere. And everyone told him, "Boy, you'll fall off the earth if you go if you keep going west." So paradigm shape our logic. Paradigms also put shape, shape our perception, how we perceive things. And an example of perception is there was this shoe company that had two shoe salesmen and they sent these two shoe salesmen to a poor country. And when they arrived, the first one, when he looked and he saw that the people weren't wearing shoes, he became depressed. And he called back to the head office and told them, you all, forget about trying to sell shoes in this country because nobody does wear shoes here. The second salesman, he saw the same thing that the first salesman saw, identical thing. However, he perceived it differently. He got on the phone and he called back the head office and he told them, you all, send as many containers of shoes that you can because we have a real opportunity to sell shoes here because the people here don't wear shoes. The same thing they saw. But they perceived it differently. Remember Elisha. The children at Bethel and their parents, when they saw Elisha, they saw a bald head man. The word Bethel means house of God. The perception of the people in the house of God saw Elisha as a bald head man. And you saw what happened to, the, to, the, to their children, how they suffered for that. So they mocked Elisha. The woman at Shuman, the Shunammite woman, she saw Elisha. She saw the same man that those children saw, that the people at Bethel saw. But she perceived him differently. When she saw him, she perceived that he was a holy man of God. As a result of that, of her perception, what she did for the man of God, how she responded to the man of God was totally different. As a result of that, she was blessed immensely and continued to be blessed throughout her life because of how she perceived the man of God. So paradigms, paradigms shape our perception. I'm not going to describe, as I said earlier, I'm not going to describe how far paradigms are forming this, this, this year, but paradigms shape our perception. This is, a, this is an effect of paradigms. Paradigms control our time what we do, we live in a world where everybody claims to be busy. Everyone, they're doing this. That's because the paradigm that they live in is controlling what they do, how they use their time. As a result of that, most people are in the busyness, B-U-S-Y-N-E-S-S, -E -S -S, and they are forgotten about their business because of their paradigms. A lot of people, they're just stressed out. They have too much to do because of the, the paradigms control what they do at the time. That's, and, that, and as a result, if you find because, because of the paradigms, people are in a paradigm of trading time for money. They focus on trading time for money. But there's only 24 hours in a day. So there's only so much time they have. Therefore, there's only so much money they can make because they are, they are fixed in that paradigm of trading time for money. As a result of that, your paradigms control how effective you are. Based on what you're able to do with your time, you become effective or ineffective. So our effectiveness is controlled by our paradigms. If, it's, if our effectiveness is controlled by our paradigms, our productivity 
is also controlled. Why this is important? Because all of us, as 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 Brother White was talking about, our businesses are run with people, are operated by people, and if the people, if the people's paradigms are not in alignment with where the business wants to go, you will have these problems with effectiveness and productivity because of what they think is logical, how they perceive things, how they use their time how effective they are and ultimately how productive they are in your business. So it's important that you understand how your paradigms are affecting them and are affecting your business. And finally, paradigms control our ability to deliver and to add value. If you have a business, you want to deliver and add value. Because when it comes to business, money don't follow time. Money follows value. Money follows value. So what you are trading, you are trading value for money. And that's the paradigm, it's a key paradigm shift that needs to be made. Or we change, or we change from trading time for money for trading value for money and knowing how to add value to people's lives. The things as we talk about character, integrity, and character that is value. That is that character is our value system, and that's what we need to work on the value system to help people understand how how powerful that value system is. And in champions, we do three. We, we, we just look at three three different things. How we, we move from trading time for money. To start trading value for money. That's what that that, that that that's what we focus on. Getting getting the people in the business to start looking at trading value for money. So when they come to your business, they're giving you value. They're producing value. They, their service produces value. Their pro, your product produces value. Your people produce value. And secondly, we look at taking one hundred percent responsibility for thriving in the midst of any crisis. It's only about 10, 15, about 12 years ago, I fully appreciated what 100% responsibility is. I always felt I was, a, I was a responsible person. But it's only when I was really challenged, I realized what 100% responsibility is. When we understand that, when we, we learn how to accept 100% responsibility, we learn how to respond to any crisis in our lives with the hidden abilities and talents and gifts that we have yet to unearth. It's only when we accept that responsibility will the abilities, talents, and gifts be unearthed and come to the fore such that we can be able to respond and address the crisis in our lives, the crisis that we encounter in business, the challenges that we face by accepting 100% response. When we talk about that, we also talk about, 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 about not blaming, blaming others, blaming events, or, blaming, or even blaming ourselves. A lot of times we blame ourselves and not accept responsibility. There's a difference between accepting full responsibility and blaming ourselves. When we blame ourselves, we are disempowered. When we accept 100% responsibility, we are empowered. And finally, the five W's of goal achievement, to live the dream that others dare to imagine. The five W's. The first one is understanding where you are and making you so uncomfortable with where you are that you want to get out from where you are. Most of the times when we deal with people, we don't, we don't make where they are currently uncomfortable for them. So we leave them in their comfort zone. But when we make where they are right now, where you are right now, uncomfortable for you, it's only then and then when you have the, 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 the desire to want to achieve more. Second, the second W is what you want to achieve. That's the goal. So from where to what? Goal, the dream, the desire. To focus on that and make that clear. Make that as crystal clear as you possibly can. That's why I always ask people, what's your purpose statement? What's your mission statement? What's your vision? Get your vision clear. 
clearer your vision, the more inspired you would be. So that's the second W so you bought. Third W, what happened when, when most people did this second W, they, just, they tried to figure out how to, how to achieve it. We don't go there. The, sec, the third W is the why. Why do you want to achieve the goal? Why gives you two things? Why gives you the purpose for achieving the goal? And why gives you the passion for achieving the goal? The purpose is the vehicle to achieve the goal and the passion is the fuel to achieve the goal. When you have both of them, there's nothing that nothing will stop you from going after your goal. That's why David was so was, was it was easy for David to kill Goliath because he had a reason to kill Goliath. He had a purpose and a passion to kill Goliath. The entire Israelite army didn't have that. They were trying to figure out how to kill Goliath. The, the four W, who, who will benefit? And how will they benefit? when I achieve my goal or in the process of achieving my goal. Most of the, most of the time we try to figure out where, where we're getting the resources from. When you first understand who will benefit and how they will benefit, you'll realize that a lot of the people who will benefit from you achieving your goal and how they will benefit. And you, and, and, and you, you find that you are in a better place to communicate with them your dream. And you find that when you communicate because you've thought about who benefits and how they would benefit, when you explain it to them, they would want to get involved in helping you achieve your, achieve your dream, achieve your goal. Whether they be your, your bankers, your, your clients, your suppliers, whoever they are, you'll find that they want to help you achieve your goal because they see and you see how they could benefit because you are able to show them how they will benefit from achieving, from you achieving your goal. Finally, the fifth W is when. When. When gives you the opportunity to, to use your imagination to, 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 to propel yourself into the future and live your dream in the present. Live your, when helps you to live in fantasy, to live that fantasy before it actually happens. Use your imagination. And you bring the future into the presence. That's the win. So those are the, the three key things. Value, 100% responsibility, and the five W's. All involved when we get people to change the paradigm. So that is, that is my presentation. I, I will stop sharing the screen now. And I want to thank you all for your attention as I hand back over to Pastor Paddy. Well done. Excellent delivery. Value, taking responsibility, and the five W's. Thank you so much, Pastor Tom. Uh, the topic, the business standing on wealth and prosperity. Money doesn't follow time. Money follows value. Thank you. Money doesn't follow time. Character is our value system. Excellent. I, I look forward to actually hearing you share more on this in 2022 and also to the rest of the presenters because this has been so rich, so enlightening, so very, very um, positive for every business owner that's here today and those who are thinking about going into business. It's uplifting. It's really uh, is a lot of time. Time would not permit us to actually go into all these topics the way we want to, but there will be a time when we will. And and as we take a we take a break from the foundation of the business at this time and building this this structure because we are going to do an extension in a bit. But before we do the extension to this building. Um, because we dealt with the foundation, we dealt with the pillars, we put up the walls, and we did the roofing. And now we have established that the business is standing on, on wealth and prosperity in terms of character and the value that we are placing on it. We want to uh, allow at this time a good brother who is coming to share testimony of the goodness of God in his life. 
uh, a good brother, uh, a big brother. And uh, when I say a big brother, I mean he is a big brother. Uh, he's a brother that you would like to have at your side, just in case somebody wants to interfere with you. He's one of those guys that you would want to have at your side. I want to welcome at this time my brother, Brother Harold, to share testimony with us. God bless you, Brother Harold. A yeah, pleasant night, Pastor Paddy. A pleasant night to the panel. Pleasant night to mighty men and women of God, you know. I've had heard so much, I'm overwhelmed, you know, and it's 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 tied right into my testimony, you know, and I, I love what Pastor Lord said when he spoke about a covenant with, with your business, you know, because my testimony is about the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God, you know, and I think, you know, when I, when I sum it up, I was going and, and, and use another testimony, but hearing, hearing all these, all these great words, you know, about business and the walls and the covering, you know, I said, I will use this one, you know, and my thing is about walking in obedience, using your gifts and using your finance for the furtherance of God and apply the word of it, God, to your business and watch the faithfulness of God and watch the hands of God move over your business, you know, because, you know, it's all up, it's all, you know, establishing your business and establishing everything is all well, but God bless us so that we can be a blessing unto others, you know, because, you know, in Luke 6, 38, it said, give and it shall be given unto you, given back unto you, pressed down, shaking and, and running over, you know, and John 3, 16 said that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, you know. God designed that whatever you want and wh whatever you want, you have to give it first. You, you want finance? You have to give finance. You want love? You have to give love. Whatever you desire for your life or your business, you know. And I was thinking while I was meditating upon my testimony, you see the prophecy, prophecy combined with prayer, bring forth miracles. Prophet, we need to prophesy over our, over our business, you know. And my testimony is a simple one, but it, it, it was long term, you know, that God delays, not God denial, you know. And here it was that it was, I can remember, it was for men can cook. We, every year I belong to the men's, the men's prayer group. My business is transportation. I have, I have two maxis, you know. And for, for, for the men can cook, that year I normally sell tickets and they asked me was to sow my time that year into the men can cook, you know. So I said, okay, I'm going to down tools and I'm going to sow my time into the men can cook. It so happened while we, we, we was preparing and, and getting ready to cook, pastor came and he asked me, they, they was about to start to prepare a medical complex which is known as the Acropolis right now. And pastor asked me if I could leave the men can cook to go and work on the truck to, um, to open the gate and close the gate for the truck, you know? I said, wow, boy, you know, I invite friends to see me cooking, et cetera, et cetera, you know? And I said, wow, but I was obedient. And there's a blessing in obedience, you know? And I left and I went and worked on the truck. For, for three quarter of the day, I came back till evening, you know, and the thing about that is that when I came back, you know, I, 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 I was well, I fit back in, you know, and one week after that, that, that being obedient to, to that call of pastor, one week after that, a guy came home and gave me a contract to work in Labico, one week. Where it is that you hear that somebody come in, I, I was sleeping and wake you off your bed to give you a contract. I said, wow. But at the end of the month, when I receive, I receive my first salary for, for that, for, for that, um, for working down in Labico. It was every day, Sunday to Sunday, you know, and I saw 10% that, 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 that month I worked for 31,100 and something. I'll never forget it. And I saw 10% of that earning into the Acropolis, which was 3,100 and something dollars. I saw that into the Acropolis. And would you believe today, after, after so long, right now, the Acropolis is, is where I am employed? 
that seed, what I have sown so many years ago, that is bearing fruit right now in this season of my life. God faithfulness, you know, and God delays, not God denial, you know, and it, it goes... It, it goes beyond that. You all hear me? It goes beyond that because Man. I can remember before before COVID came, I, I was promoted, pastor had promoted, asked me to the intercessory level with Brother Spingles and two other brothers. And I think Pastor Paddy accompanied us once. We used to go on San Fernando Hill and pray at five o'clock for 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 the Acropolis and for the churches. You remember that, Pastor Padier? Yeah, so... Yes, yes my brother, yeah. So, there. you know, it, it, it ties all in to, to your faithfulness, being obedient to using your gift and using your finance. As Pastor Lord rightly say, you know, besides you being covenant, you, you also have your business to be covenant with God for the furtherance of the kingdom of God because God bless us so that we can be a blessing unto others, you know. I remember I remember at the start of the, the pandemic, when the pandemic started, I tell my wife, you know, I said, that was never, you know, I was looking for, when you go out on the road, we will work it, working at 50 cents. So some days you're coming in with 150, 200, some days you have to, you have to put in Put back in these uh, out of this 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 money what you're making this this little money what you're making you no know? but I think I want to tell the men on the platform and the woman don't ever stop paying your tithes God is faithful God is faithful you know and I told my wife that this Christmas will be the best Christmas of my life right now at present I'm presently employed with the Acropolis and I've received another contract from a Canadian company, God is provide for me more than ever when before, before even COVID was there. I'm receiving much more than even when, and you know, I always say that one of my mantra is that light shine in darkness, that stand and stand light. So this is a time where that God people and people who trust in God and applying the word of God to the life, this is the time for us to shine. This is the time for us to do the most amount of business. But this, this is the time where that the people will look onto us to, to ask what we are doing and what we have. And then we'll be able to tell them because of the goodness of God and the faith of God over our life. I thank God that I remain steadfast during all those seasons which have passed me. Because in every season, God is doing something, you know, and Sometimes when, when we, 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 we reach a rough patch, we always ask God why. I don't ever ask God why. I ask him to help me to understand what you're doing in this season so I could partner with the Holy Spirit, so I would not fight the Holy Spirit. And we have to come to that point, even with business, with life, that stop asking why and ask, and ask God to help you to understand what he's doing in this season of your life so you could partner with the Holy Spirit because the, part, the Holy Spirit revealed all truth unto us. And with that, we will have, if we apply that, we, we, we call it like childlike faith because he desired that we have childlike faith as, as um, the, the speaker go before, why, what, when, and how to do with our business and God will provide the answer to the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the opportunity to share my testimony and may God bless all of us and prosper us in each and every way of our life. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful and powerful testimony from our brother, Brother Harold. And knowing Brother Harold, for those of you who don't know, Brother Harold is a, a man of the word. He has tremendous testimonies that, that he said he, he just picked this one to share this time. And it was such a blessing, Brother Harold. Such a Amen. blessing to hear that testimony. Um, I am very encouraged and, and I'm thankful for what God is doing in your life. And I'm happy to see that God is continuing to, to cause you to be a signpost of his glory. Cause you to be 
a man that he has is looking and is signing his grace upon at this time. So thank you so much for that wonderful testimony. Amen. Thank you again. Thank you. As we go back into the building, and I want I want us to know that as we build, anything that we build with Jesus involved in, it doesn't stay the same. As you and I would know, as children of God, when Jesus Christ came into our life, our life drastically changed. Whenever God is in something, it could never be normal. Whenever the fire of God touches your life, you could never stay in one location. You have to move. It's not if or maybe. The change will happen. You will impact where you are. Chains will be broken. Lives would be changed. And when we understand Father with the Holy Spirit, we, we understand that Father with the, with the Holy Spirit is connecting to what God is doing and what God loves to do. And what God loves to do, for God to love this world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The last presenter is coming to speak on the topic, the business, investing, and expansion. When we build a home and we are building this structure, there is going to be expansion. There is going to be a time where we move out of our current location and expand. Whether we throw on a, a, another room or two, whether we just build an entire new um, building altogether, there will be expansion. Because why? We are building on, or the building is standing on wealth and prosperity. And because we are children of God, we know how to occupy till he comes to have dominion. He is from the New Testament Church of God, the National Evangelism Director. He is from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. He is now very passionate in where God is taking him to minister outside the four walls of the church. He is a former uh, men director from the New Testament Church of God in Bele. He's a, and also a former men director in charge of several Caribbean countries in the Lesser Antilles. He's the managing director of Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Limited in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And yes, he is evangelist Andrew Miller. And he's about to speak on the business investing on expansion. So would you help me welcome Evangelist Miller? at this time. God bless you, my brother. Thank you very much, Pastor Paddy. Good evening, men and women of God. Uh, thank you for having me, for having me on this platform at this time. We give God thanks, we give God praise. Brother Harold, I really wish that they had changed it and asked me to speak on you can't outgive God. And then I would have been very passionate to say when you give, it's not a if, it's not a might. When you sow into the kingdom, it's not a maybe. But the Lord said that He will give back unto you in full measure, press down, shaking together, running over. And you know what? You will not even, if you give patient, sorry, faithfully, you will not have containers. You can't find containers to entertain or to keep the blessings of God because the Bible says the blessing of the Lord make it rich and it adds no sorrow. So you continue giving and watch God work in your life. I read from the book of Psalms tonight, and I almost thought that Pastor Tom was going to read this portion. And also my brother David. 
I read from the book of Psalms 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builder labor in vain. I'm reading from the NIV. Unless the Lord watch over the city, the gods watch but in vain. I can I speak to us today a bit on investment and, ex, and expanding. I ask us the question first of all, why are we investing? That's why we, we must ask ourselves, why are we investing? What is our purpose of wanting to invest into business? We're talking, we talking literally physical business now and also spiritual business. But if we are to look at the physical aspect of business, we would want to ask, why are we investing? Secondly, I would ask the question, what are we planning to invest in terms of finances? What are you and I are planning to invest? Because to build a business, Pastor Lord already set the foundation about the covenant, and we see this the spiritual covenant with God. But to build a business, we must have an idea, Pastor Tom, as to what are we willing to invest and how far we want to go. Because you cannot expand into business unless you understand where you want to go now. And when you understand where you want to go now and what I'm willing to in invest initially, then I can think about expansion. So in our investing, as I ask the question, how much are you willing, you and I are willing to invest, or even the person who are on the platform who might be thinking about business and are wondering how to get around business? Because... If you don't have an idea as to what you want to invest, you could end up before the business start going anywhere, the business can fail. If you don't understand what you're willing to invest. My next question is, who are you willing to, willing to invest in? Because as much as we are going to invest in business, and we have decided on our investment. There must be some individuals in the business that we are willing to take the risk of investing in. You will invest in them financially, in training. You will invest in them in their lifestyle and all of that. But there are no guarantees that after you have done all this investment that they are going to stay with you. So I am just, I am just basically going around this area in terms of the what. The what. And the who. Are you willing? I heard Brother Dave speak about having his relatives work with him. And Brother Dave, I take a bit from what you are saying. Because Having relatives starting, especially if you just investing in business and you don't, and the relative does not share your dream and understand, they could become like a stumbling block. Because sometimes your relative come with an, the idea that they, they come with an expectation that because they are relative, you owe me something. Another part of that is from the church, Brother Dill, Pastor Dill. Sometime we want to invest and we are some really nice good brothers. We are some really nice good people. We nice and we love the brother. We want to invest in the brother and the sister in the church. And we bring them into the establishment. 
But I have proven, I have proven over and over that the very church people you sing and you dance with and you laugh with at church, when you bring them into your business, it is total disaster. Because very often, they come as though you owe them something. They come forgetting that where the kingdom principles apply as Christian, that we ought to be servants where we ought to be servants, and we ought to be masters where we ought to be masters, they come forgetting that. And what happens is that sense of entitlement, well, you are a brother in the church, so I could come and do what I want, or if. And what that does, that becomes a stumbling block to us. And that can deter us from building our business. And that is the reason why I ask the who are we willing to invest in? Because there are certain people, and I want to, I want to even emphasize, it is really not good to even invest in your best friend in business with you. Your best friend could become your worst enemy in business. Because where money and friendship is, where money and friendship is, there's something that is not everybody understand how to deal with money and deal with friendship and keep both of them separate. Because if I you didn't get, because you're my friend and it's your friend business, because you didn't get to do what you want to do, then it is not good. So as we look at the, the, the investment and as we invest in business, we must understand what we want to invest, who we want to invest, and understand why are we investing. Somebody said it earlier on. We, we all invest to make, we all invest to get a profit. If you sit there and you tell me that you're in business and you don't intend to get a profit, somebody will be telling me lies. Because I invest to get a profit. I ain't going to play no, no pretty brother and no pretty boy Christian and nice words and all of that. No. I invest to get a profit. And the idea is behind that. When we invest, there is where the expansion comes. We must stand behind our business. We must, there are some things that we must do. You have to have stability. You must be stable. You have to have the right mind, concepts, and precepts. You have to tap into God. You have to be involved with, as Christian men and women because, you know, unless the Lord build the house, you know, remember the Lord is the, he is the, he is the chief architect. And with the chief architect, he is the chief builder. He is the master builder. And if the master builder, if the master builder, is not involved in you and my life. If the master builder is not involved in the investment, if the master builder is not involved in the organizing, if the master builder is not involved in when in your employment, as Christian men and women, Pastor Dale, you talk about it because. In the covering of protection, when the master bill are not there, we are not protected. And there is where we are being destroyed. Because at the end of the day, your life and my life must represent Christ. And when an unsaved man comes in, he must see Christ in us. That when he speaks, when he speaks, and when he, when he, he does something, we must take a firm stand as men and women of God and say, listen, I don't adhere to this foolishness because I am not willing to bow to any foolishness. You, we, we have to be stern because sometimes as Christian men, everybody expects that you're, oh, you're a nice, good pastor. You're a good preacher. Yes, you are in the church. That everything that they say and they do and it is wrong, we must, we must turn a face or we must have a soft heart. Well, brother, when I come to tell somebody tonight, we have to be careful that our kindness and our meekness are a misconcept of weakness. We need to understand that in our business because our business can flow. 
if we are not stable, if our minds are not right, we must have a renewed and a transformed mind if we are in business. And guess what? That has to be every day because when you move into business every day, every day is not the same in business. And you might not go to work feeling the same every day. So we have to ask God to give me a renewed and a transformed mind. We must persevere. When things not looking right and things not looking bright, not because we didn't do well, it didn't look like we did well last week. That doesn't mean it's time to throw in the towel. We have to understand the God that we say we serve was able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. We have to know that God, that sometimes that God allow us to go through some rough patches. That we would say, that we would understand that Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, when you go through the flood, when you go through the river, and when you go through the fire, I, God, I am still there. I am there with you. Fear not, I am with you. So we must be able to persevere. We must push hard in our business. If we are going to see the business develop, if we are going to see expansion, if we are going to see life change, the very workers that you think not looking at you and I, they are paying attention. They are going to look and see how weak and how strong we are as men and women who say we are Christian. I need to, I need to go and, and, and finish. I don't want to take up all the time. We have to stand firm. We have to stand firm in the word. We have to stand firm in God and we have to stand firm in our business as men and women of God. We have to be able to understand, yes, we have to be separated. The Bible says, come out from among them and be separate. We must stand separate. We must stand set aside. We must stand as example. We must stand. Listen, I share this testimony in here. Pastor, um, Pastor Paddy, just give me a few minutes. I know my time is almost finished. But I share this testimony. I had a young woman working for me. She actually stopped working, you know. She stopped working. But you know what she said? She said, I started my business. It wasn't going right. It didn't go well. I came to work with you. But looking at you and the way you conduct business and the way you deal with people, now I've stopped working with you, but now I'm going back to my business. Why? Because I think I am better prepared to run my business. Taking what I have seen, the example. That's why I said we must be set aside. We must be an example in what we do. We must believe in ourselves. You must believe in yourself. If nobody doesn't believe in you, you must believe in you. If you are going to see your business flourish. If there is going to be extension because we're talking about development and moving forward. Listen, if you don't believe in yourself, the business has already failed. Because you would always want to hang on to what? The initials. Listen. I want to say this. Listen to the initials. You need to listen to them. The naysayers are not always bad. We need the naysayers in our lives. They help to fashion our walk. They help to fashion our step. And they help us to look into ourselves and do some self-examination. I'm going, I'm going to finish. My last point. Learn to adapt to change. Learn to adapt to change. If we are going to see, we are going to expand on our business, we are going to increase on our investment. If you can't adapt to change, listen, the old style will you will still be set back 20 years while the business, while, while the new style has gone beyond you and you can't catch up. We have to learn to ad adapt to change and change with the technology. Thank you very much. That's my presentation, Pastor Paddy. <laughs> Blessing. God bless you, Evangelist. Evangelist, I would like to give you the opportunity <laughs> to speak to and, and, and close off this uh, this part of the of this part of the panel in terms of a business, using your business for evangelism. And in terms of persons accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, because that is the heart of the matter. Um, could you do that at this time? 
So, the wise man, Solomon says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole, the whole matter. Serve God. As businessmen, I want us to understand each and every one of us as businessmen are called marketplace evangelists. Every one of us are marketplace evangelists. What happened is that we meet people every day. We talk to people overseas. We talk to people locally. We deal with our customers. We deal with people with issue. We deal with our workers with issue. It is in our face. And it is a perfect time for evangelism. Your own staff hurting. How do you deal with your own staff that is hurting? How do you deal with a customer that is hurting? How do you... How do you have a supplier that you are talking with a supplier, somebody from across, across the seas who's talking with you and something is going, and listen, you're talking to them, but you know something is wrong because your spirit is saying something is wrong. What do you do? We are God vessels. We are God chosen vessel for the hour, for the time. God has positioned us. God has placed us. God has anointed us and put us in some some, some serious location and position to touch somebody's life. I ask us this time, how many lives do we see ourselves touching on a daily basis in our going? The word of God says, go. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. The question is, do we see going as just packing up, picking up one day and say, let's go? Or do we see going as every time we are on the move? Going is every time we are on the move. From the time we leave our houses, even in our houses, we are going. Our job is to minister God's love. Tell somebody about God. The word of God says that he's not willing that anyone should perish, but all come to repent. And sometimes men are dying and perishing before us as Christians. And because of who we are, sometimes because, and I said it a while ago, exempt, being an example, being set aside, because sometimes we are not being set aside. What happens is that we can't minister because we speak the same language. We sing the same song. We drink from the same cup. But we are set aside. We are marketplace evangelists. Today, I don't know if there's anybody who's on this platform who's in business. And they are looking for prayer. If they are on this platform and you are looking for prayer, maybe you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior one. That's first and foremost. And you want to make him your friend. This is the right place to do. Today, now is the right time. The hour is now. Today is the day of salvation. Maybe you are in business. And you are looking for a breakthrough in your business. You are on the right platform. You are on the right place. We have enough men and women that can pray you through right here. If you are, you don't have to put on your camera, but you can, you can just show your hands. Just show your hands and somebody will pray for you. Pray with you right here. I want us to pray with somebody today and I'm, I am going to, I am going to at this point, I am going to ask Sister, Sister Marilyn to unlock her camera or, or mic, sorry. And I'm going to ask her to pray to cover every man. Zola is asking for prayer. I want you to pray for Zola. Is there anybody else? Why do I feel in the spirit that there is somebody else? There is nothing for you to be ashamed or afraid of. If you, you're looking for prayer, you want almost us to pray you through, you're looking for a breakthrough, just show your hand. Just put up your hand. There's enough men and women on this platform who's going to stand with you. And we are going to fight in prayer with you tonight. So I'm asking Sister Marilyn to pray for Zola and cover the other men and women on this platform. Um, 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, what a mighty God we serve this evening, Father. What an awesome privilege, oh God, to come before your throne of grace. To God, oh Father God, in your mighty and matchless name tonight. Father God, tonight your word declares that the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he who wins souls. They are wise, Father God. Lord, your man servant here this evening, mighty God. You know them all by name and by nature. You have called them, O oh God, and positioned them strategically for such a time as this. And conscientiously, O oh God, they have chosen the path, Father God, to walk in humility before you, God. To walk, O oh God, in reverence to you, Father God. Mighty God, you have spoken. God, they have heeded the call tonight. Lord God, you have placed a mantle upon them, Father God. O oh God, Father, to be businessmen, O oh God, with integrity and character. Businessmen tonight, O oh God, who will lift up the bars and the standard of holy living, mighty God. Businessmen, O oh God, where men and women will look at tonight, Father, because they name the name of Jesus. I pray tonight, O oh God, that every one of these men tonight, O oh God, will truly, O oh God, lift up the standard, Father God, of righteousness, O oh God. Being businessmen, O oh God, with integrity and character, mighty God, Father. Lord, truly, O oh God, who will represent you on the earth tonight, Father God. You have walked, O oh God, through Jesus Christ on the earth, and you lived a sinless life. You live a life tonight, O oh God, where your, O oh God, disciples and apostles, Father God, emulate tonight. And these men whom you have called and chosen, mighty God, Father God, choose likewise, O oh God, to walk with integrity, to walk, O oh God, where your name, mighty God, will be their sure foundation. Where your name tonight, O oh God, will be the pillar upon which they build. Where your name, O oh God, will be the walls, mighty God, as Nehemiah did. The roof, O oh God, of protection. Father, O oh God, tonight, O oh God, and covering, O oh mighty God. Lord, mighty God, where truly, O oh God, the business, O oh God, will stand on wealth and prosperity, Father God, in the winning of souls tonight, O oh God. Father, I pray, oh God, tonight, Father, where there will be expansion, oh God, in their physical life and in the lives, oh God, of those who they come in contact with. Father, I pray tonight that your anointing will drive them, oh God, to a place, oh God, of total surrender, oh God, to a sovereign God, to a holy God tonight who watches, oh God, over the affairs, mighty God, of their lives. I pray, oh God, tonight, Father, that you will truly, oh God, nourish them with your word. Truly, oh God, nourish them tonight, oh God, where their lives, oh God, will be a light in the darkness tonight, oh God. Father God, I pray the prayer of Jabez upon them, Lord, that you will extend their borders and their territories, oh God. Father, I pray, oh God, they will not cause grief to anyone, Father God, but they will continue to pursue the mark of God, the things of God. I pray, oh God, for the same mind. I pray, God, they will speak the same thing. There will be no division, Father God, as they perfectly join with you tonight, oh God. I pray, Father God, that they will not put themselves, oh God, tonight, pre preserve them from bribery, from corruption tonight, oh God. Father God, let your will and your perfect will be done in them. Bless their households tonight, Father God. Bless their children, Father God, those who are grandchildren, bless them tonight. Protect, oh God, tonight, Lord. And Father God, tonight, I ask you, Lord God, to lead them by your spirit, Father God. Lord, as many says, and whatever, oh God, they have to do, let there be a powerful prayer altar with you, mighty God, maintaining integrity in themselves. Father God, tonight, let the value system, oh God, not only be time, God, but be value tonight, oh Father God. Lord, I pray, God, for the five W's, mighty God, in achieving their goals will be, oh God, Father God, represented, Father God, in their lives. Let it be prosperity. Let their hands be blessed tonight, oh God, in whatever, oh God, they place it to do, Father. I commit them, give them good health, good strength, long life, good success, and favor. I release your blessings upon them 
Lord God, which make it rich and added no sorrow, Father God, for them tonight. So, Father God, bless them. Bless them bountifully, Lord, as they continue, oh God, to pour back into the kingdom of God that your name will be glorified. We know, God, that money equals mission. So tonight, oh God, so Father God, have your divine way in their lives tonight. As I lift up Sister Zola, mighty God, you know the reason why she's on this platform. You know her heart desire. You know her heart cry. And tonight, oh Father God, I lay her on the altar, mighty God. I ask you, Father God, tonight to bring her into relationship with you. Father God, we're truly your God. She can see you as Lord and Master and Savior in her life today. Oh God, touch her and her household, oh God. Let there be a turnaround, oh God, tonight. I yes. pray, oh God, even for her children tonight, oh God, and her spouse, oh Father God, that they will be in oneness, they will be in unity tonight, oh God. Keep them tonight. Keep her tonight, Father, as she chooses, oh God, this path, oh God, to follow you, God. And tonight we know that mighty God, as she seek you, she will, oh God, meet you, Father God, that you will change her life, that you will never, ever be in a sin. Reclaim her, Father God, in the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of God tonight, in Jesus' name. Every other person is back for God. I pray your blessings upon them. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Marilyn. Thank you. Men and women of God, thank you. God bless you. Awesome presentation. God bless us all. Pastor. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, Evangelist. Thank you so much, Sister Marilyn. I, I know God is really moving. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. I want us to go into a short time of worship. We are going to be ending very soon. I want to call on Pastor Diana Dung, who is the assistant pastor at Baptist Ambassador Church. Uh, she's a youth mentor. She's a care and education counselor. She is a recording, a national recording artist, and she's a powerful worshiper of the Lord. And I want to invite her this time to just lead us into a God worship this time. God bless you, Pastor Diana. Thank you, Pastor Paddy. Good night to the panel. I am Pastor Diana Dongsalin. And as you heard, I am an associate pastor, the Baptist oh. Ambassador of Christ. You know, tonight when he called me earlier, I was just attending to my husband. He had just come home. So I thank you all for your patience. This evening, before I sing, I heard in my spirit that now is a time for separation. Just as God in the beginning when he was making the world, he said he, he divide the light from the darkness. In the amplified version, it says separate. Think about it as we look on here now. In Revelation, he said, the just shall be just still. The unjust shall remain unjust still. The righteous shall be righteous still. Right now, there's a separation between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, between those that have COVID and those that have not, even our money, between the old and the new. <laughs> and tonight, we know that you all are men of integrity. You all are honorable men and women of God. And he's separating you as special people in his business world to make a difference. Oh, my God, Eddie. A blessing on every man and woman of God on this panel tonight. And may your heart be restored as I sing to you. Still, this is the time where God wants us to be still and know that He is God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I mean now. And I
Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are God. He wants us to be still tonight and know he's God. Find the rest, my soul, in Christ alone. No, his heart, in quietness and trust. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know your God. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know your God. He wants us to be still, yes. In the midst of this pandemic, be still. I know your God. He will provide. He'll make a way. Trust in him. Trust in him. Trust in him tonight. Trust in your God. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He will provide for his children. He will provide for his own. We will be still. We will be still. We will be still. We will be still and know he's God. We will be still and know he's God. Somebody worship him tonight. Somebody give him praise, yes. Lord, we trust in you. We trust in you tonight. We trust in you, Jesus. As we put you first, make a way. As we seek your face, make a way. As we look to you, make a way. You're my Jehovah Jireh, Lord. You're my Jehovah Shama, Lord. You're my Jehovah Rapha, Lord. In the midst of this pandemic, Father, you are our healer, Lord. You are our protector, Lord. We run into you, the strong tower, yes. We run into you, Lord, yes. Hide us today, Lord. Hide your children, Jesus. Hide us, Lord, under your feathers of your wings. Oh, yes, Lord. We take our shelter in you. We find the rest of souls in you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. Somebody worship him tonight. Somebody worship him. He's truly God and God alone tonight. He's truly mighty to save and strong to deliver. He's our friend today that's taken closer than a brother. He's going to see us truly, man. He's going to see us through this pandemic. He's never leave the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He's going to see us through. You just believe in him tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a beautiful name. Thank you, Jesus. What a beautiful name tonight. Thank you. So much. We know about the name of Jesus tonight, amen? amen. I say we know about the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You were the word of the beginning. Hallelujah. One with God, the Lord, was 
your hidden glory and creation. Now revealing you, oh Christ, what a beautiful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you bought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. We know about that name tonight. There is power and victory in that name. There is healing in that name. There is protection in that name. Oh, we know about that name tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Demons tremble at that name. Oh, glory. We worship your King of Kings. We worship your Lord of Lords. We lift up the name of Jesus in our homes tonight. We lift him up above every form of witchcraft working against us. We lift him up against every barrier in our business tonight. We lift him up above every obstacle in our business tonight. We lift him up above every curse in our business tonight. Every negative word spoken over our family. We lift up the name of Jesus. We bind every force of darkness, hindering our blessings tonight. We push back every wall standing in our midst tonight. We push back every stumbling block standing before us and our goals tonight. And we declare that Jesus is Lord of our business. We declare that Jesus is Lord. We put him first tonight. We put him first. We put him first tonight. And we lift up our standard wherever the enemy comes in like a flood. And we declare that Jesus will prove to our enemies tonight how strong he is. We declare, oh God, expansion in business tonight. We declare favor in businesses tonight. Once of God, who put their trust in him tonight. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We thank you that we are in Goshen tonight. We are the children of God and we are in Goshen. He will provide for us in this pandemic. We shall not lack and we shall not look for bread. He is our provider tonight. I declare the blessings of the Lord and make it rich and I have no sorrow in Jesus' mighty name. Over to you, Pastor Paddy. God bless you, servants of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody just say, Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed oh, God, we give you praise. Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor, Lord. We give you glory. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you so much, Pastor Diana. Praise God. Welcome, great, Pastor. Great time of worship. Mm. What a way to come to a close. And I'm so, uh, I'm uh, almost sad that we are closing tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. God is so good. I just want to I just want to thank everyone for participating. I know some people would have had to leave. But the team of this conference, this is the first day of three days of conference, is partnering with the Holy Spirit. And I know we may have 
went a bit over time, but it's good to just enjoy worship. It's good just to enjoy the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. You know, tonight's theme, Kingdom Principles and Integrity in Business, I want to thank Pastor Lord, Brother Dave White, Brother David Hernandez, Reverend Dill Francis, Reverend David Tam, and also Evangelist Andrew Miller for awesome, awesome presentations tonight. God bless you all. Job, well done. So happy to be associated with you all. I'm so happy that we are uh, beneficiaries of this wealth of knowledge and wisdom that you shared here tonight. I want to thank you all for, for participating in this night. It was a great experience to cooperate with you during this event. Uh, we appreciate the information, the time, and the service given for tonight. Tonight didn't just happen by chance, but it happened because of the goodness of God. Uh, we thank God for Jesus. I want to inform you all that um, this recording would be edited and shared on our social media platforms. And for those of you who would like to receive this, let's... Uh, send us your email in the chat. Um, just send us your, your WhatsApp information in the chat so that we will get in contact with you to share this with you. And we'll be editing it and putting it, compiling and putting it together so that everyone will be able to, more people will be able to enjoy this rich knowledge that was shared here tonight. I want to thank uh, Sister Marilyn, Thank you so much for your prayer. God bless you. I want to thank again Pastor Diana for that wonderful worship. I want to thank our, our Zoom host for tonight, Sister Kati. Great job. Excellent job. I want to, and this one, my heart is full of thanksgiving. This is just a, a vote of thanks, and it's coming to an end because, you know, tomorrow we have another day. Tomorrow we are having our man conference, 3 p.m. And then on Sunday, we are uh, culminating this three-day conference with a time of prayer and worship. And I just want to ask you all to continue to pray. Continue to pray. Continue to trust God. Continue to partner with the Holy Spirit. It's not our will, but it's what he is doing at this time. So we are just here as vessels to be used by God. And I, I just want to close and, and give you all a chance to send your information on the chat as I welcome um, Pastor Dillion. Pastor Dillion is coming just to close us with a song as we all just enjoy the worship and close at this time. So on every platform, I always like to say, be careful for nothing, but in everything, with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you all. I love you all. I hope that you will be able to join us tomorrow. The link will be shared. Um, it's going to be on YouTube and Facebook, um, tomorrow's men conference. So feel free to join us online. Thank you all again. Pastor Dillion, take us away. Take us home with some worship. God bless you all. Love you all. Good night, everyone. Are you hearing me? Yes, Pastor. Yes, but this is my phone I use it, so I don't know how this will come out. So, no, I use a laptop, I use a, a, a USB mic now. So, this is the phone I use in here. So, I don't know how it will come out. So, <laughs> amen. Hear you loud and clear. Thank you, Jesus. Good night. God bless.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We praise your God tonight. We love you, Lord, tonight. We give you glory. We give you praise. Lord. We worship you today, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Have your way. We give you praise and thanks for what you have done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless God. Bless the Lord. Bless God. Bless you, Pastor Dillion. Good night, everyone.